Okay, so now that I've got some objects uh, that I've modelled uh, and some other things that I've brought in from the library, I'm going to start assigning materials to these, these objects. And I'm actually going to start with the, uh, the ones that already do have some materials assigned uh, and show you how you can get to those and also uh, how you can see the different displays for the materials. So uh, I've just got this 3D view uh, adjusted so that I can see that door clearly. And I'm going to just go through the different displays that you've got. Uh, uh, starting with wireframe. Obviously, you don't see anything much except for the, the line work. And the line work really isn't considered a material. You control the line work separately. And uh, actually, have any of you thought about that? Um, how the lines work? And maybe, because uh, I know you've used AutoCAD. Um, and so you maybe thought about the line weights. So that's something to think about. It is a bit like materials, but, uh, but again, materials are separate in that to the lines. So, so again, with wireframe, you basically don't see the materials. With hidden line, uh, you really don't see them either. Uh, but then if you go to shaded, you see the colours. And so you can see there we've got this brown colour on the wood part and then the glass is see-through. And then the one below shaded, consistent colours, actually is using the same colours as you have with shaded, uh, except there's no lighting. So with shaded, you'll see as you orbit the view, as you adjust the angle, that the colours on these surfaces change. So if you just maybe keep an eye on say this wall here, you can see it's fairly light at that angle, but as I bring it around, it becomes darker. So of course the, the paint colour of the wall isn't changing, it's the, the lighting or the shading uh, that comes from the lighting. And so that's what you get with the shaded option. But then with consistent colours, it just takes all of that lighting away. So you see the, the plain colour um, without any of that shading. And that can be really useful. There are times when you just want to have the colour that you've chosen without the extra shading that's meant to, again, simulate some lighting. So again, those things all come from materials. And then if you go to realistic, you have a different type of material. It's the same material, actually, but it's a different display. Uh, and so it's sometimes called the render material, or in Revit, it's the appearance. So I'll just show you how to get to that. We've had a look at it before, but I'll just, just go through it again. So I'm going to select the door and then go over to edit type. So that's normal. When you think about the material for most objects, you go to properties, and then usually you go to edit type, and you'll see then you've got to do a bit of detective work sometimes to find it with different objects. So in this case, it's not there at the top, but if I scroll down towards the bottom, then I can see we've got these two material slots. Or sorry, actually three. So we've got material of frame, and that's the main material. The glass is fairly plain. So, so that material of frame material is called frame. And just watch out for the button at the end. The one to the right of that slot uh, is to something else. That blank button. Uh, that's parameters. You don't need to do that yet. So to change the material, just make sure you click where the material name is and you'll see the browse button come up. The button with the dots is always browse. Click on that and it takes you to the material, the material editor, which sometimes does take a minute. The first go, it's going to load the red render modules, uh, but there we are. Okay, so, that, so it's actually called the material browser, but I think of it as material editor. Uh, in other programs, that's what it will be called. And so you can see there we've got this frame material selected. So notice how over here we've got graphics and appearance. So again, the graphics is the colour that we had in that shaded view in consistent colours. That was the plain colour. 
and then appearance is essentially the more detailed version. So that's why we've got the texture, that wood texture, and that's the display we get with that realistic mode that I've been showing you. So all materials in Revit have those at least those two aspects. It actually can be more than that, but they're the two main ones. So graphics, again, for the simpler display, really, and then appearance for the more complex one, which you normally use for, um, for rendering. Uh, so, so again, I think I mentioned to you last week that you can start to uh, collect these images uh, or textures that you can use to make your own materials, but most of them will have them preloaded when you go to start. So this one already, you can see, has this uh, image of timber, and if you click there on the file name, you can see the file that it's using. And usually there, if you want to see how that looks, you can just change the view to thumbnails. And it's going to show you what these look like. But I'm going to scroll back down to find that one. Wood, plastics and finishes. Wood teak. It takes a minute to refresh it all. Okay, so anyhow, that's the, uh, that's the image there. And so they're just files, often JPEG files, but do you know any of the other formats that are similar to JPEGs? You might have used them in Photoshop or if you've downloaded images. Exactly, yeah, yeah. PNG is the, basically the new JPEG, so you'll see a lot of those. Uh, TIFFs, maybe another one you've seen. Uh, well, you don't really work with a resolution as such, you work with an image size usually. But yeah, often people think of that as resolution, so resolution uh, normally is in, in DPI, and so that will, it'll end up being 300 at the end of the day, but, uh, but these just have an image size, and you normally want them to be over a thousand by a thousand these days, but the older ones will be a bit less than that. So, well, let's just see. If I hover there, well, you can see this one is over a thousand. So that's a thousand and twenty-four by a thousand twenty-four. So that's how you get the the other pixels. Yeah. So, so again, you can collect any of those images that you like and and put them into your materials. And Oops, sorry, let's go back to uh, appearance. And so then you've got uh, some other options as well. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is uh, make this a simpler material, just so we can go through the basic properties. And so I'll start on the left. I want to keep that frame material so I can go back to it. So I'm going to duplicate it just by right clicking. You can go to duplicate. And this is the important process, actually. So this is the standard process that you can use to make a new material, starting from here. So again, I'm going to right-click on that train material, go to duplicate, and I'll just call it train uh, plain color. Right, so it's going to be a paint finish instead of the natural wood. So that's the first step. Make sure you. Uh, make the material in that list on the left. That's your main list of materials. Yep. No, no. So just in your file. You won't even see it in other files. So it's only in that project file. Yeah, but yeah that's a good point. So, uh, so now I've duplicated the material on the left. But then notice how over in the appearance tab, it's got now this number one has come up over that hand there. So that's telling us that it's sharing the appearance with the original frame material. And it's probably the most confusing part uh, when you make materials. So what you need to do when you're first working with materials, keep an eye out for that hand. If you see a number there, then either duplicate or replace. 
And if it's not clear to you why you had to do that, it will become clearer as you use the program more. Um, but yeah, really important that you do one of those two things. So again, either duplicate. If I choose duplicate, I'll just do that. You can see it's got a zero. So that means basically I'm free to change this material here, or sorry, sorry change the appearance, and it won't affect the original material. Uh, and that's really important. Otherwise, and you see people doing this all the time, they start making new materials, change the appearance, and then find that all of their old materials are changing. So duplicate works, but the other option is to choose replace. And when you choose replace, that takes you to the appearance library. So remember I was saying Revit comes with a big library of materials, but you need to know how to get to it. So here you can see this is the only folder I'd recommend you use, the appearance library folder. Don't worry about any that say physical. So the physical assets, all of these physical materials underneath, uh, you don't need to worry about. And it's easy to remember, you're changing the appearance, so use the appearance library folder. When you expand that, you'll see all these different subcategories. And I'm just going to go for, uh, well, I'll show you a couple that have paint. So we've got the paint folder, but then you've also got wall paint. And wall paint, wall paint actually has a bit more. The ones in the paint folder are uh, more generic, I suppose. And then the ones in the wall paint folder are set up specifically for, for walls. And, uh, and you've got a fairly decent selection of colours there. You can, of course, adjust those. So maybe I'll go for red. Go for anything. Oh, no, I'll use green. I'll always do red. So let's do green for once. I never do green. Okay, so when you double click on the material here, or sorry, on the appearance here, double click, then you can close the asset browser and you'll see that it's put that appearance into the material that you've made. So this is a fairly simple material. All it has is a colour and then these basic options for the finish. So that's all I want to look at now, how you can adjust the colour fairly easy. Click on the colour swatch and you've got the primary colours and it gives me a chance to remind you what the real primary colours are because there's a lot of confusion there. Uh, actually I'll ask you, what do you think the primary colours are? Yeah, that's good. If you know red, green, blue, you, you, you're thinking the right way. That means you've, you've used digital colours. Um, yeah, red, yellow, blue is what you're often taught. If you're taught by an old art teacher, I was uh, for many years when I did art and painting and uh, was taught red, yellow, blue and learnt that colour model. It's actually wrong. Um, it's the older one. And it comes from the history of, of art and, uh, and, and colour theory. Um, and it's, it's, it does help you understand this. Um, red, yellow, blue is a subtractive colour model. In other words, that's working with pigment and that absorbs light. And what you see is, is the light that's reflected. So uh, until quite recently, um, they couldn't make all of the pigments necessary to create the full colour range. Um, it was only in the early 20th century that they finally made uh, most of the, the pigments that are needed to make uh, you know, the colour range that we've got now. Um, and so red, yellow, blue is actually an approximation of the printer uh, colours that you'll see uh, most printers have, which is cyan, magenta, yellow. And if you think about it, cyan, similar to blue, yellow, obviously similar to yellow, and magenta is similar to red. And that's why red, yellow, blue works. You get most colours, but if you've ever had an, an art class where you were struggling to make certain colours, and I've had this where art teachers have said, you're not doing it right, it's, it's actually um, not correct. The colours are the problem when using red, yellow, blue. There's a huge range of colours that are out of gamut or that you cannot make. Um, because they're not the true primary. But it doesn't mean you can't do amazing things with them. All the great artists um, worked with red, yellow, blue and did amazing things. Um, but again, they're technically not the true primaries. And it's really important you understand that because with digital colours, with a computer, 
uh, you can get the full colour range. And using additive colours, in other words, mixing light, uh, you work with red, green and blue. And there's a lot of confusion because red, green and blue sounds a bit like red, yellow, blue, but they're actually completely different. So red, green and blue, you're adding light, and that is uh, going to give you a much wider range of colour. In fact, pretty much all of the colours that you can see. And if you still don't believe me, um, it's not because of computers that red, green and blue are the two primaries. Uh, have you ever thought about why we have primary colours in the first place? What makes something a primary colour, or why do we even have these things called primary colours? I'll give you a tip. It's nothing to do with pigments. A lot of people who work with pigment all the time get confused by this, because they're thinking so much about making colours by subtracting light. So think about what, how do you see? Hmm, sorry? Yeah. Your eyes, exactly, spot on. It's your eyes. Okay, our eyes have red, green and blue receptors. That's why they are the two primaries. Your cone. Exactly. They have RGB. That's right. Red, green, blue. That's right. Oh, I thought it was green. But yeah, you're right, yeah. Oh, right. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe in terms of human perception that could be true. But in terms of evolution, um, animals, uh, like, so the way it works, I think, is that mammals, most mammals only have two colour receptors. Um, so you know how they say dogs that only see in black and white? That's not entirely right. They have two colour receptors. And most mammals do, as far as I know. They've got um, red and blue. They don't have green. But primates, th they, they re-evolve. So... So, uh, reptiles and, and birds have three, or some reptiles, but definitely birds, have uh, three colour receptors. And then mammals lost uh, the one of the receptors because uh, they didn't need it. And, uh, but then as primates um, you know, were living in forests and uh, getting fruit off trees, uh, it made sense to have a, a green receptor so they could differentiate between the fruit and the leaves. Uh, so that's as far as I understand the evolution, and uh, and so yeah, primates one of the few examples of them re-evolving something that they'd lost, and uh, and yeah, so they got the green receptor back, as far as I understand it. Yeah, so it goes back. I mean, this is you know, 25 million years ago. Well, primates, I think they're uh, actually a bit older, 40 million, 50 million years ago. So yeah, fairly long time ago. Oh yeah, yeah, in hu and in linguistics, yeah. Yeah. Oh, in terms of, yeah. And that, but that's human perception. Also, the way you describe colours. And yeah, it's really interesting because there are many cultures um, where they don't have um, words for, for lots of colours. And... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's quite a common thing. Even in, like, in ancient Greek, they, they had quite a limited uh, range of words for, for colours. Um, but I've always wondered about that. I actually did linguistics um, quite a while at uni. And... Um, uh, yeah, so in certain, you know, what I consider older cultures, they have very limited, like in hunter-gatherer societies, very limited number of words for colours. But I wonder, you know, are they actually, I don't think it's that they're seen differently, they just don't, didn't have the words to describe them. And, they, and in Greek, I think they did have, I think blue and green, like you're saying, they did use the same word uh, for those colours. But I'm sure they could have seen, you yeah, their eyes were seen the same as what we see, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting when you look at the way they describe them. Yeah, yep. um, So, uh, but yeah, really interesting. I think and colour theory is a big thing for design, and uh, having a good understanding that, of that is really important. Uh, graphic designers all know this stuff, but it's always interesting to me that uh, you know, in the interior design, because you do a lot of uh, uh, manual work or you know work with traditional mediums. And that red, red, yellow, blue model is still quite uh, predominant. Uh, but again, once you start working with a computer, red, green, and blue. I always like to explain that because with those three settings you'll see in any computer program that works with colour, you'll have usually red, green, and blue as the primaries. And you can make any colour with those three values. You can, of course, just keep it simple and use these swatches to uh, start off or just use this hue slider to pick, um, pick your colours from there. 
and then you can adjust the uh, lightness and the darkness with this slider on the right. And then you have the other approaches using hue, saturation and luminance. That's another way of uh, specifying a colour that works equally as well as red, green and blue. And you can also go to Pantone. So you've got the Pantone um, colour palette there and you can choose any Pantone colour as well. And that's really important to get accurate colours. Uh, so, if you know those red, green and blue values, you can transfer that colour into any other program as well. Maybe I'll go back to the green though. Right, so, as well as the colour, you've then got the finish and uh, we've got these basic presets. And for paint, that's, that's all you need. Then the application as well. This is just something that you have with the, the paint material. What I'm going to do now though is uh, just one extra step. You don't have to do this when you're making your materials. But I just want to show you how these settings work behind the scenes. Uh, so I'm just going to right click on that appearance tab again and go to duplicate as generic. Right, so the generic material is essentially the base material that all materials are based on. So that wall material had just a small selection of settings, but this is showing us all of the settings. And so that glossiness uh, option that I was choosing was actually setting the values for the reflectivity and also the spray was setting this uh, bump pattern. So once you change it to a generic, you can see how all those, all those settings work and, uh, and fine tune them even further. So we'll go much further into that later on, but just wanted to get started on that. And so I'll, uh, I'll click OK. OK. And you can see that my crane has changed, so that's the, uh, the part on the side. So I'll go back and select the door again, and then back to edit type. And scroll down and uh, find the other one. So again, you've got to sometimes just work this out. Uh, so it must be material of shutter. It's the one that's uh, setting the main door material. I'm just going to select that material, click browse, and then find the train plain colour. And so that'll set the appearance. We'll come back to the graphics in a second, but I'll just, just click OK. So now they're using the same material. So we don't have to do all of that setup again. Once you've made the material, you can assign it to as many things as you like. But then I'm just going to go back now to shaded. So it's on realistic. If I go back to shaded, you'll see it's not green. Uh, and that's because I've just changed the appearance. So I just wanted to make that clear. So here I'll go back to find the material again and there it is, plain, plain colour. So I changed the appearance but I hadn't done anything with the graphics. So you need to think about those two aspects with every material. And a simple option you can choose there is just to tick use render appearance and it will pick up the colour that you've set on the appearance tab. So it's quite common to set the appearance and then just come back to the graphics tab and, and use that option to pick up colour. And so now it's green in all of these. Oops, not in line of course, but consistent colours, realistic. Okay, so I'll just do another one on the deck and then I'll give you plenty of time to try all these things. So with things that you make using uh, Model in Place, what you did last week, it's a little bit different because you don't go to edit type. If you do, you won't see anything at first for your materials. So what you need to do instead is select it and then choose Edit in Place.
then you need to select the pieces. And this is why it's different, because you'll have different parts that you've made, usually with model in place. So I'm holding control just to select all the extrusions I've made. Oh, sorry, yeah, so is everyone else just going? Um, okay, so, oops. Sorry, so yeah, just to continue. So I've just um, been holding down control because I've made several extrusions. So I need to select all three that I've made. And then, what, just as an example, what I might do is leave one out. So I'll just uh, hold down shift and I've deselected the bottom one and I'll assign that afterwards. So again, I've just selected the two extrusions there using control. And so then with these, you'll see, you don't need to go to edit type, you'll just see in properties, it'll have the material and it'll be set to by category at first. So that's where you need to look and you'll see the browse button comes up just like it did for the door. And so I'm just going to make a quick floor material just to uh, show you a bit more of the graphics tab. And so again, I'm going to use the same process as before. I'm going to start with a material uh, that I already have. So this is a wood material, so that's similar to what I want to make. So that's a good way to start. Right click and duplicate. And I'm going to call it uh, floor boards. Floor boards and so just like before, go to the appearance tab, right click and I'm not going to worry about duplicating this time, I'm just going to go straight to replace. And then again, just like before, go to the appearance library folder, double click. And then you'll see the floorboards uh, are actually, they're not in the wood folder, they're in flooring. You double click there. And then you see you've got a wood subfolder there with all these different floorboards. So I'm just going to choose one that I like. So that beach wood is OK. I'll double click on that. Close the asset browser. And then I can see the material there. So I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to go back to the graphics tab. And again, I can tick use render appearance to get the color. And then I'm just going to do one extra thing. I'm going to go to the surface pattern. And where it says none, I'm going to click. And then this is a really good rule of thumb. If it's a surface pattern, use model. I'll explain that later, but for now, for every surface pattern, just always use model. And you can choose any of those patterns. So I'll just choose the 100 mil horizontal. That's just a hatch. And click OK. So we'll see those lines on the surface. So it's a bit like a hatch that you do in AutoCAD. And that's it. So I'll click OK. And then I'll show you there is a bug in the program, which I'm sure is going to happen. Yep. This happens all the time. You do everything properly, and it doesn't work the first go. It's not a huge problem, because I'm just going to select those two again and show you. If I click here to assign the material again, it is there. So it makes the material, but for some reason, uh, it doesn't assign it the first time. So you just need to go back, uh, choose the material slot, and, uh, and then click OK. And it'll come up. There we are. So that's, of course, the appearance that we're seeing, because it's unrealistic. But if I go back to shaded, now we're going to see that colour, but this time with the lines. That again gives us an idea that it's meant to be floorboards. And we'll see those lines in hidden line as well. Just in colours. 
the game is realistic, we get the far diversion or the appearance. <coughs> and so now I can select that last step and then just go to the material slot, browse the materials there, click OK, and it's assigned to that as well. Right, so hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview of materials. Uh, I might come back afterwards and um, do some uh, floor materials for the, inter uh, the interior floor and the bath and the plumbing fixtures afterwards because it's probably a bit too much if I keep going now. But um, yeah, so I'll give you some time to try assigning some materials to some different objects. Um, so try and at least do one on, a, on an object that's um, that's been loaded, like a door or a window or anything that you get from the library, and then try and do one on something you've modelled using uh, using mod in place. That'd be good. So I'll give you some time to try that.